Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I'm going to talk about the Musical Paradise MP301 Tube Integrated Amp. Now, for those of you who just want to know about how it sounds, just skip to the following timestamp. Now, when my vintage friend, uh, I call him vintage friend as he plays only with vintage gear these days, uh, but he used to play with ultra high-end gears in the past, email me info on this MP301 Integrated Amp. Yeah, it looked interesting, but as soon as I saw the price, I deleted the email right away. Come on, 330 bucks US, well, plus shipping, plus customs if you live in Canada. Really, how good can it be? So a few days later, I met my vintage friend and he told me this amp is worth looking at. Now, if my vintage friend insists that I should consider looking at it, yeah, I was definitely curious. Now, the thing that stood out to me the most is the fact that the MP301 can use a lot of different kind of tubes. So I'm just gonna put it on the screen here, the, the tubes that this integrated amp can use. Now the best part is, is that it's plug and play. You just plug it in, no need to bias the tubes, and it works. Now for those of you who don't know about tubes, whenever you change tubes like this, from an EL34 to a KT88, the sound signature will change dramatically. Now, looking at the MP301, I received it using the stock Chinese 6L6 and 6SJ7 tubes. And you have a headphone jack in the front, but I did not try it, so no comments there. Now you have a switch to change from headphones to speakers, and there is no remote with this uh, integrated amp. At the back, you had two RCA input jack and a switch to select the voltage. Pretty small, but not heavy. I think it's pretty cute and professionally built. For most listening sessions, I use my Zoo speaker cables and Asus computer sound card DAC. Now I have to admit, I did eventually end up using my Moon CD player as the DAC because it was smoother. So this unit is a review sample. And I reached out to Gary asking for it. Now Gary is the owner. Uh, for those of you who don't follow me, I rarely reach out asking for a review sample. Usually companies reach out to me or I buy the gear myself. I reached out because my vintage friend really wanted to try. So most of the findings in this review, uh, most of what I, I want to talk about is actually from him because uh, he spent most time with it. So when I reached out to Gary, I asked him, uh, why should anyone choose your integrated amp over all these Chinese integrated amps on Amazon? So Gary highlighted a few things to me. Number one, he spends a lot of time at the final circuit and sound refinement stage. He makes sure the equipment sounds good to his ears and touches his soul. Second, each product revision, like MK1, MK2, are based on customers' feedback. So Gary makes continuous changes and improvement to his product. Now, the last one, I think the most important, is that he chooses his component carefully for sound and reliability. Now, he always uses US military Dale resistors, genuine and high-grade Japanese and Holland-made electrolytic cap capacitors, and high-grade Sweden or German-made MKP capacitors and Japanese Z11 transformer cores. Now, these are more expensive to purchase compared to the Chinese-made ones, and those Chinese-made ones are found mostly on those integrated tube amps uh, on Amazon. So he chooses quality components. Now, I did not bother trying the MP301 with non-efficient speakers as it is only 6.5 watts. I used it with my Omega Super 8, my Zoo Audio 30 Weekend, and my Klipsch uh, RP600M. They're probably around 97 dB, so very efficient. Anyway, my vintage friend tried it with way less efficient speakers. He told me it was good with his Dynaco Kabas MC40 and reference 3A-MM Gen 2. So how does a $330 integrated amp sounds? The MP301 is neutral sounding. At 6 watt per channel, you're not going to get any meaningful bass. My speakers are 97 dB, so although it has bass, it's not very powerful bass. So it's slightly thin sounding. I find it a little bit gritty. So it's not silky smooth. So then you're probably wondering, why would I want this integrated amp? So let me tell you, my vintage friend will buy this integrated amp and he prefers it over the Prima Luna Prologue that costs maybe seven times the price of this. Well, seven times because 
of the tubes he used uh, in, the, in his Prima Luna. They are new old stocks and they're quite expensive. A few reasons that he wants to keep this one over the Prima Luna because he's planning to sell the Prima Luna first. It's cheaper to buy and maintain. Uh, he likes the fact that there are high quality parts used in the MP301. And at stock form, he prefers the 6L6 tube sound over the EL34. Now, what I find interesting about this amp is that it's for more advanced listeners. Now, I'm going to use myself as an example to explain what I meant by advanced listeners. So when I first started my audio journey, what I value in my listening experience are very detailed highs, clear vocals, and crazy bass. Crazy bass. Put a sub in, shake the foundation, pressurize the room, and give me that chest pounding bass, and that is awesome. Detail highs, I want as sharp as possible so I can hear the pin dropping and clear vocals so I can hear the, the singer's breath. That was the beginning of my audio journey. Now, although I still want all those, okay? As I gain more experience, my priority change as well as what I enjoy. So what changed? I start paying attention to soundstage, wide and holographic soundstage, and I, I need air in my soundstage. Now this tube MP301 can produce a holographic soundstage with depth. Now you see the other integrated amps I have here. Okay, they're solid state. The Sprout 100, the Ato 30, Diota VX. None of them can create the same experience. A deep holographic soundstage with air. No, sure, I mean, the, the solid state integrated amp here can create soundstage with depth, but not at the same level as the MP301. Not even my, uh, the Yakin or Yachin, I don't know how to pronounce it, tube integrated amp that I had before can do it. Now the Prima Luna can though, it can create a deep holographic sound stage. So let's talk about details now, okay? What is detail? For me, if a system is detail sounding, it means that it requires you no effort to hear all the, the nuances. You see, all the information in the track is always there. If you listen to a high-end system, the difference is that with a high-end system, it requires you little effort to hear those little details. But once you hear that detail in the high-end system, and even if you go to a budget system, you will still hear the same details because you're aware of it now, but it requires you more concentration to hear it. Now, one day I'm gonna make a video to better explain this, but Back to the MP301. So in that sense, the MP301 is not as detailed compared to the, the other entry level solid state uh, integrated app I have here. However, okay, let's exaggerate a point here. Let's take a pin dropping, for example, to exaggerate a point. I mean, exaggerating, okay? We always say we want a system be, to be so revealing that we can hear a pin dropping, right? Now, with the regular solid state integrated amps I have here, the, the, you know, the IOTA, the Sprout, yeah, you can hear something dropping effortlessly relative to the MP301. It is more detailed in that sense. However, the strength of the MP301 is that although it will take you more effort to hear whatever that's dropping, it will, however, able to distinguish if it's a pin dropping or if it's a nail dropping. So what I'm trying to say is that this is a very honest sounding amp, and that is its biggest strength. In addition, instrument separation is very good with this. So remember when I say when I was a newbie, all I care about was powerful bass, but now I care more about if I can distinguish what kind of bass, what is happening. I need good definition in the bass so I can tell what is happening. Now, this is what the MP301 can do. It will not give you foundation shaking bass, but it will give you good definition bass. So for example, like the drum notes are very clearly separated. Now talking about highs and vocals, the highs and vocals on this amp are not fatiguing. So although I don't find it silky smooth, my vintage friend finds it smooth enough. Now please keep in mind, okay, I am used to power amps that are very smooth. So if I take this and compare it to the other entry budget amps I have here, yeah, it's okay smooth. It's not a bad thing though, if an amp is not silky smooth, because if there's a bit of grit, um, some instruments really stand out, like, like guitar, for example. So, in short, this integrated amp sounds very open, does very well with instrument separation, has a pretty decent sized holographic soundstage with depth. It's not warm sounding, 
All right, the base can be better, you know, because it's a little bit thin. That's why it's not really warm sounding, but it's neutral and honest. It's not clinical sounding and it does have the tube warmth. More modern sounding than my Yakin, but not as solid sounding as the high-end Unison Research Amp I once had here. One of my subscribers who is relatively new to the audio will drop by to listen to the PS Audio Sprout 100, the IOTA and Ato 30, and he can immediately tell the MP301 is a completely different experience compared to auto solid state amps. One issue I do find is that it's not a really forgiving amp, meaning if your recording sucks, it will show. Because the low end is not particularly strong, when I play some badly YouTube recorded videos, it sounds thin. But with great recording, yeah, it's good. So, tube rolling. Now, although I can do a, some tube rolling with it, I did not, I did not try. I used mostly the stock S6006 uh, tube, and it was fine. Um, sure, when I switched to the USA Bogan 6L6 tubes, it sounded better. But because the tube sockets are really tight and hard to change the tubes, uh, I did not bother trying different tubes because I was worried I would you know, damage it. Uh, I, I like the fact that you use the 6L6 tubes because I've heard a few amps with EL34 already and I wanted something different. Now, at my vintage uh, friend's place, I noticed the speakers disappear easily with this amp. Sounded very engaging, has a slight vintage flavor because he only uses vintage uh, speakers. Uh, this is not true for all the amps. When I brought over my other integrated amps, the entry level ones, it lacks the, the vintage warmth. So when I play the MP301 with the newer speakers at my home, I do lose the vintage flavor, but it's not completely the new analytical sound. So it's an integrated sound somewhere so it sounds somewhere between the old tube sound and the new tube sound. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, right, old tube, new tube sound, check out my Prima Luna integrated uh, amp video where I explain more, you know, what, what I consider old tube sound and new tube sound. So I'm going to close the video now. Now, this is a product I find is priced weirdly. Now, it's priced as an entry level gear. I mean, 300 something bucks US, but it's not aimed at beginner level audio file. Audiophiles whom I met, who is at the stage where they're prioritizing soundstage, honesty, instrument separation, usually don't look at entry-level gears. But here, I have a little budget integrated amp that's pretty good at exactly that. What I do know as of now, okay? As long as you don't play at high volume. Important, okay? Uh, well, they do get loud, but I never cross 9 or 10 o'clock on my volume knob. You don't play bass-heavy music, and you are not in search of the ultimate resolution and smoothness then this could be for you if you value instrument separation on a sound neural production and a nice airy holographic sound stage with depth. In that sense, it's better than my uh, solid state entry level integrated amp. Now I have good success as I mentioned with the Clips Zoo and the Omega. You know, maybe after this review, I'll, I'll test it with the Elax and uh, I'll put in, put in the comment section if I do. Um, but guys, seriously, man, 300 bucks, well, 400 bucks with the shipping. Um, this is quite something. You know, we really live in a world where, you know, you don't have to pay a lot to get amazing sound. Now, my, as I mentioned, my vintage friend will buy this unit um, I have here. So this should give you an idea how much he likes it. Now, my advice is this. If you're just starting out in audio, okay, you're a beginner, uh, look at the other solid state integrated amps that I'm going to talk about, like the IOTA VX, the Toe 30, the Sprout 100. I think those are great for, you know, for the, for, for beginners. Okay. But if you feel like you're ready for the next step in your audio journey and you never tried tubes, then this is a very good entry point. It'll give you that experience, what this holographic sound stage that I've been preaching about. And if you already tried many tube gears and you're very, familiar with what tubes can do. Maybe look at their high-end products uh, from Musical Paradise. I've not tried them myself, but you know, if Gary designed these with the same passion as he did with the MP301, then it should be pretty good. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it, guys. So uh, very interesting uh, integrated amp. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I spent many days listening to it. And uh, yeah, till next time.